Hi there. Um, today we're going to talk about our relationship with food. Okay, so I know it's the beginning of the year and many of you have set new year resolutions, goals for the new year. Many of them are gonna be focused around food, losing weight, eating healthier, changing our diet. But why is it that these are the same goals that come up every year? Last year, we had that same goal of losing weight, changing our diet, and something happened. We just weren't able to meet that goal. And so year after year, we set the same goal. Now, I know that you've set other goals in your life, and you have not had any problem achieving them, right? So why is our relationship with food different? Why can we not set a goal around food and achieve it? So it's very interesting because there's many reasons for this. And it does have to do with our relationship with food, which began way when we were an infant, right? So think about if you're, if you're a parent and you have your infant, or back when you were an infant, you can imagine we were able to receive food from our mom when we cried, right? And it wasn't that we were crying for food. What was happening is our body was telling us something, right? It was rumbling. It was telling us we were hungry. And so we'd cry out. And magically, we would get food. Oh, my gosh, this lovely breast would come or a bottle, and we were nurtured. And along with that food came holds and coos and love. And think about how food became a part of being loved and being held. And that's at the core of our relationship with food. And that just carried on through life, right? There were times in your life that you were rewarded with food. If you were good, you got to eat the candy. If you finished your meal, you could have dessert. There were all kinds of ways that we were rewarded with food. When I would come home from school, there would be a treat waiting for me, a ding dong, a Twinkie. And oh my gosh, my favorite was the pink snowball. And those were more expensive. So that was like a specialty treat that I would get every once in a while. But I would so look forward to that treat when I got home. And I got to associate being home with that comfort and that special treat that I would receive. Many of you may have had similar experiences where we are celebrated around the holidays, birthdays, and we would have a birthday cake, right? There's always food associated with feeling good. And so we associate food with feeling good, especially the sweet food. Now, we may have other relationships with food. Now, many of you may also have had that relationship where you had to clean your plate, right? If you didn't clean your plate, you didn't get dessert and you had to eat everything, which means along with the peas and carrots or those lima beans or something else green on your plate, you had to eat that in order to get that dessert or anything else. And so dessert's being held as this prize, this reward at the end, right? And the other foods, the vegetables, that's kind of like that punishment that we had to get through. We had to work through eating those in order to get the good stuff. And so now we're also ranking food. You know, some are good and some are bad. I remember my parents would tell me I needed to clean my plate because there were starving children in China. I don't know if there's any starving children. There probably are, but there's also starving children here. But it made me feel guilty if I didn't eat all the food on my plate. So there now there's another layer, right? So food gives me comfort. It gives me a feeling of love. And then there's also that feeling of guilt that I might have if I didn't eat all of my food. And this all messes up with our relationship on what we eat. And so when you think now about letting go of certain foods, there's a struggle, there's an inner struggle that makes it a lot harder. And so I haven't eaten meat in probably over 10, 15 years. And I would go on just a weekend cleanse, just try to lighten my diet, you know, do a, maybe a fast. 
And I would have dreams of fast food burgers, right? I haven't had a burger in I don't know how long, but there was something in my psyche, something telling me that I needed to have that, that I couldn't tell you, no, you couldn't eat. Or maybe it was my survival system kicking in, telling me I need to eat to survive. But something was telling me that I needed to eat that burger. And so we get mixed messages all the time when it comes to our food and what we're eating. So now we, and we, you know this, right? But just talking about it helps make sense of why we have such a struggle when we're trying to move our diet, shift our diet, add something new into our diet, um, let go of something, right? Because we have so many repressed memories and so many ideologies, different thoughts about how we think about food. And, you know, and it doesn't get any easier when we have to deal with the media, right? So we're watching television and we know that the cool kids drink this drink. Um, and if you're hip, then you can go to this restaurant and you order this meal. So we receive messages, not only from our family and our history, but even from the environment outside of us, they're sending us messages about what we should be eating. And then there's another layer, right? So these manufacturing companies have found that there's certain triggers, certain tastes that just excite us and make us want to eat more. And a lot of these are created in a lab, so they're not even real, but they taste good. And so you eat that piece of chocolate or that dessert, or even, you know, a fast food um, hamburger, it has these special taste these these um, chemicals that elicit a taste and you just want more it's just so satisfying and so now we have that struggle on top or that challenge to just make this a little harder but but we can get through this right and so there are strategies that you can use to help shift that diet, change that diet, decide what you want to eat and not be influenced by our past, by the environment, um, and by some of that faulty thinking that we have. And I think that just reminding ourselves, me thinking back as a child, you know, what were your rewards? You know, what are your memories. I mean, I ate ice cream every night before I went to bed. We would sit as a family in front of the television with a bowl of ice cream. I know now that that's not a healthy choice, but does it feel good? And do I want to do it? Yes, yes. You know, especially now that my parents have passed, you know, it brings back that comfort to me. But knowing that maybe what I need is some comfort, right? And, and there's another way now I can find comfort. We also talked just a little bit about how food sometimes was used as a punishment. You had to eat something. And we had this idea about the food that we had to work through. We had to eat maybe because it was told it was good for us, right? So now we start thinking, oh, food that's good for us doesn't taste good. Food that's good for us, you know, I have to get through it. it it's not something is, that is to be enjoyed. But we could shift that concept too, right? What if I was treating my body because I loved my body and I wanted to be healthy to some healthy food? What if I could shift my understanding of what eating healthy food meant and how good it could taste? So there are some strategies that we can use to help you get through this shift so that you can achieve these goals that you've set for yourself. And I'm not gonna get into all of that now. You can always connect with me on Facebook. I also have a website. Um, both are under my business name, Living Beautifully Free, where I share some ideas. And you can always connect with me on there if you want some individual assistance. But just know that you can do this and that it's just, it's not because you're not strong enough and that you're not able to maintain this goal. There's just a lot of influences that are affecting your ability to meet this goal when it comes to food, just because of the relationships that we have with food.
So I hope that you find this video helpful. And again, if you need any, any support, if you want any ideas or just want to bounce a thought off of me, please message me and I'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, have a great day and be well. Bye-bye.